It's freezing cold, it's even snowing, but I think I've just found a quad that's better than the Coppice One and the Dark Max. This is the Furiby X215 Pro. So in from Gearbest is the Furiby X215 Pro, and I've been looking forward to this beautiful looking racing brushless quad. I've got the FR Sky version here, and this comes in very cheaply at £110 or about $120. So considering that that's with a receiver, that's really cheap. Let's have a look inside. So first of all, we get props, lots of props. In fact, you get three sets in total, different colors, so you can mix and match there a little bit. They're 50, 48, three-bladed props, and they look really nice, actually. Got a carbon plate here, not sure why that's just bunged on the top. It's a battery uh, securing plate, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then also we've got a little GoPro session or a Runcam 3 mount as well. So that's quite nice. Some of the Furiby quads have come with these in the past as well. Quite nice that they're bundling that little protector with it. And then there is the quad. Oh, that is beautiful. Now, <laughs> first thoughts are that it's heavy, but we'll have a look at it in a minute in more detail. First of all, just the rest of the accessories that come with it. We've got a battery securing strap uh, and also a small pagoda antenna like the one that came with the Stormer 220 and actually proved its worth. It wasn't a bad quality antenna after all. So they're the accessories that you get in the box. Let's have a look at this awesome quad in more detail. So here it is, the 215 Pro. Now my first thoughts when I pick this up are Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> Let's bring in the scales and find out just exactly what it weighs. So without a battery, 311 grams, which isn't super heavy actually for a quad of its class, but it does feel heavy. Now, most of the reason for that is the makeup of this quad and how it's built. Majority of it is 3K carbon fiber and we've got four millimeter arms here. So as with the other recent large Furiby quads, you're gonna really, really struggle to break this. It actually reminds me of something from Aliens because of the shape of this front bit here. Now that <laughs> is also partly responsible for the weight here because um, it's a combination of carbon fiber on the front here, but also aluminum. Minium. Consider how cheap this is, 110 pounds, to get good quality components like 3K thick carbon fiber like that and 5 mil aluminium machined really beautifully. I don't think that's a bad price at all. What's really, really nice is that this frame protects the camera and of course protects the motors as well. So this really is probably as crash proof as it gets. So it comes with an FR Sky receiver, which we've got installed in here already. I believe it's an XM Plus, um, which you can just see, and it comes already wired up with the antennas kind of interestingly mounted out of the back, but quite nice that they don't give you that task to do uh, yourself as they do with most quads. Although you might want to reposition these slightly. There's also not a lot of slack between uh, where the antennas are zip tied and the actual receiver itself. I prefer to have a bit more slack on those cables just so that if you do manage to impact these with the ground and they twist around, it's not gonna rip the antenna off the actual socket on the receiver. There is an option for PMP plug and play as well. So if you've got your own receiver, probably worthwhile going for that option instead. Inside the middle here, we've got a really great stack of components. So the flight controller is actually a Hollybro Kakut. It's an F4 flight controller with a built-in OSD. Also in the stack, we've got a four-in-one BL Heli speed controller board um, and that's a 30 amp board which supports D-Shot as well. We've also of course got the VTX on top there. It's even got a tiny little display so that you can see the channel and the band that you're using as well. So that's a really, really nice stack in there. On the side there's our USB port for programming via Betaflight. And then on the VTX board on top, there's a tiny, tiny little button there. That's most likely for adjusting the band and the channel that you're on as well, possibly even the power output. Just whilst we're talking about the VTX, it is a 5.8 gig, obviously, 40 channel, and it is switchable 0, 25, or 300 milliwatts. So 25 to 300 is quite a leap. It's a shame there's not uh, 150 or a 200 in the middle there to give you some middle ground. So from that speed controller board underneath, we've got these cables, which are heat shrinked, going out to these lovely big motors. Now these are Furiby motors, they're 2206, 2600 kV. Now these are not quite as fast as the Dark Max, but they are spinning 
running nice and speedily. No doubt there's loads of power available on this quad. And attached to those are, of course, the props that come with it, which are the 5048 three-bladed. On the back, we've got a buzzer, yay, with a little sticker that, of course, you need to remove. We'll do that now. And we've got four little LEDs as well. I never get excited about LEDs, but I do get excited about buzzers. Just above that is the port for the antenna, and it's got a slight angle on it so that when you are flying um, at speed, the antenna is perfectly in the air, so that's good as well. And the antenna is connected to the VTX via a small little pigtail cable, so that's quite good if you do manage to impact that antenna and for some reason dislodge that port. Now onto the front, and we've got a very interesting camera on this quad. It's apparently a 1200 TVL, uh, and it's a CCD camera, which means we're going to get lovely video quality from that. There is a really beautiful lens on the front, and as mentioned, it is just about protected by the two sides of this lovely aluminium frame as well. On the rear of that camera, there is a tiny little control joystick for adjusting settings on that camera. Now, there doesn't look to be a programming port on the camera, so that joystick control seems to be all that we've got there in terms of adjusting it, but that's a really nice looking camera unit. In terms of the tilt on that camera as well, it goes all the way up. So for you crazy people who like to fly with an 85 degree angle, <laughs> it's possible with this one. Not that we're going to be test flying it like that, because it won't be a very long test flight. On the side is the XT60 connector. Now I mentioned with the other quad we reviewed the other day, I think it was the Stormer, that I don't like the side exit style of this. I just think it feels a bit vulnerable. And why exit it out of the side when you can exit it out of the rear instead, and it's much neater for then folding around to connect to the battery. I just feel that this connection is going to be strained over time, but well, time will tell, I guess. And it wouldn't be a big issue to adjust that slightly, perhaps, or even just rotate the power board. That's an idea as well. And just finally, on the tips of this frame, I love these spikes. Now I guess they are probably to avoid or protect any impact with the motors. Certainly wouldn't want to crash that into you because those spikes would hurt. Uh, I accidentally crashed one into myself the other day and there was no pain, but I think with this one that could actually hurt a little bit. It certainly cause a minor sting. But yeah, what a great looking quad. Slightly heavy, great specification however, and looking forward to test flying this. So it's inspected and set up, ready for the test flight, which will be in part two. And look forward to it, because this is now my favorite five inch quad. Links to it are in the video description, so go and take a look now. And of course, give the video a thumbs up. And please, please comment below, even if it's just to say hi. Finally, smash subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Hey, come